smallest grammatical letter or mark in the original language of the Bible, both Hebrew and Greek, was inspired by God. That God not only inspired the sentences, the paragraphs, but the very words and the spelling of those words. Now, in the course of this series on the signature of God, I've shared with you some astonishing levels of evidence. We looked at the historical evidence for Jesus of Nazareth and showed that the historical evidence is overwhelming. We looked at scientific evidence of astronomy and statements about weather in the Bible that were thousands of years in advance of their day. We looked at medical evidence. That was astonishing. Thousands of years in advance of the medical knowledge of the ancient Egyptians. We looked at archaeological confirmations of the Bible. And we also looked at fulfilled prophecy. What I'm about to share with you is beyond any shadow of a doubt the most astonishing, most fascinating, and the most compelling evidence I have ever seen that God inspired the Bible. You see, the book of Proverbs tells us that God hid some things in the Bible. It says in Proverbs chapter 25, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. What the Bible is telling us is that God has concealed something, and it's the honor of kings to search out that matter. I want to share with you what Israeli scientists have discovered in the last 10 years. It is a phenomena beneath the text of Scripture, whereby skipping an equal number of letters each time, we find words spelled out in the Hebrew original text of the Old Testament. These words will reveal astonishing knowledge, not only in their complexity that is beyond the capacity of any human writer, but you're going to see that God wrote in the text of the Old Testament 3,500 years ago words that relate to Adolf Hitler, the Holocaust, even the Gulf War. Let me share some of the astonishing things that now have been found. You see, Adolf Hitler was revealed in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. What do I mean by that? Well, what the Israeli scientists did is they fed the entire text of the Bible, the Old Testament, into a computer. And when they did, they then asked the computer to look for key words. Let me just show on our computer what it looks like. Because the Bible actually has some astonishing things to show. You see, they didn't know whether Hitler was there or the Holocaust. How could they know? In fact, it's been a mystery to the Jews why the Bible doesn't say anything really clearly in prophecy about the Holocaust, about Hitler, the worst tragedy in the history of Israel. But you see, about 600 years ago, some of the Israeli rabbis, Jewish rabbis in Europe, who memorized whole portions of the Bible, noticed something strange. They notice that if you look at the words that spell the letter, the letters in the word Torah, law, there are four letters beginning with the letter Tav, which is the equivalent of a T, that if they went to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the very first word in the Bible, Bershit, and they found that T for Torah, the letter Tav, if they skipped forward 50 letters, they found the second letter of Torah. And if they went another 50 letters, the third letter, and the f other 50 letters, the fourth letter. In other words, they found that God had spelled out the word Torah every 50 letters. Here you can see a slide showing how by skipping an equal number of letters, in this case, every 22 letters, they found that the word Hitler was spelled out. But I want to tell you, they found not only the word Torah spelled out every 50 letters in Genesis. When they looked at Exodus 600 years ago, they found that Torah was spelled out beginning with Exodus chapter 1, every 50 letters. Then they looked at new numbers in Deuteronomy, and it was spelled out every 50 letters in reverse. Except Deuteronomy, it was every 49 letters skipping. Now, obviously, there was a pattern here. God had done something curious. But it remained until the development of high-speed computers before they could begin to check other things. Because they didn't know where in the Bible these things might be coded. But there was a hint, based on the rabbi's discoveries, that some things were there. Now, we have a slide that shows Deuteronomy chapter 10. I want you to look at the top of that slide because it shows the word Hitler. And you can see that the word Hitler is spelt with five letters. Remember, Hebrew reads right to left. So Hitler is spelt with the first letter, He, which looks a little bit like our N, Yod, Teth, Lamed, and Resh. These five letters spell Hitler. I want to show you how the computer found the word Hitler in the Bible. You see, 
We have a computer program, and in the signature of God, we tell you the name of this program and how you can get a hold of it. You can actually get it from a ministry, which we'll communicate with you, and how you can do that if you communicate with us. But this computer program is available on Macintosh computers, such as I'm using here, or IBM. But here's what the computer program does. It comes out of Israel, and it's called Torah Codes. It shows, in Hebrew, a particular book of the Bible. In this case, we're looking at the book of Deuteronomy. Now, I'm going to go to the keyboard, and I'm going to feed in the name Hitler, beginning with the letter He, Yod, Teth, Lamed, and Resh for the R, for the last letter of Hitler. Now, I'm going to ask the computer to look all the way through the book of Deuteronomy, which is called Devarim in Hebrew. And as the computer does, you can see it's going like a barometer across the screen, and it's looking at every possible combination, whether it's two letters apart, 30 letters apart, 500 letters apart. And here the computer has already found, what has it found? It found this co co particular code that shows Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 10 to 17. Take a look at it on the slide, and we'll show you what the computer found. In detail, the computer now shows that there's a, a hay letter at the top of the slide. You can see it's over on the extreme left on the top line. That letter hay is the equivalent of H in Hitler. They went 22 letters forward and they found the letter Yod. Another 22 letters forward, and remember we're reading right to left. They then found the letter Teth. Then they found the letter Lamed for the L. And they also found the letter R, Resh. Here is Hitler spelled out every 22 letters. Now that would have been astonishing enough if they'd found just Hitler, but it wasn't all. In that same passage, they found the word Eichmann. Eichmann was the general who, under Hitler's orders, brought about the final solution, the death of over six million Jews killed in the European death camps. But in that same paragraph, they also found spelled out at equal letter, equal letter intervals, they call it equidistant letter sequences, the Israeli scientist at Tel Aviv University found, at the Hebrew University at Tel Aviv campus, they found using the computer, not only Hitler, Eichmann, they found the phrase king of the Nazis. Then they found Holocaust, crematoria. They found all of these words, even the word Führer. They found Mein Kampf. Hitler's book. All of these, all in the same place, together with the phrase, crematoria for my sons. Then they found the phrase, an evil house will rise up. All of these words related to the Holocaust and Hitler, all in one area in the book of Deuteronomy. Well, these were mathematicians and statisticians, and with their computers, they ran a statistical analysis. They asked the computer, what's the chance that if you have a jumble of letters, how many times would you have to try this experiment by chance alone to come up with all of these names in one place in the Bible? The answer was one chance in three billion. Well, that would have been amazing enough, one chance in three billion. But then they fed in the word Anwar Sadat. And when they fed in Anwar Sadat, what did they find? They found his name, Anwar Sadat, in Hebrew in the book of Genesis. Then they found the word president, gunfire, shot, murder. Then they found the word parade, and he was executed, assassinated at a parade. Then they found 1981 in Hebrew and the name of his assassin. Now, this is absolutely astonishing. How could... The Bible contain these codes written at equal letter intervals within the text of the Bible written 3,500 years ago by Moses unless Almighty God told them what to write. It went for far further than that. They fed in, in the computer, the word French Revolution. They found French Revolution was found in the book of Genesis together with the name Louis the King. They also found House of Bourbon, his dynasty. They found the phrase Bastille, the name of the prison where the revolutionaries were kept by the royal family. And they even found Marseille, the name of the French national anthem invented by the revolutionaries during the French Revolution at this very time. How could these words be there unless God inspired the authors to record not only his words, but the very spelling? You see, when they found this, they submitted an article to the British Royal Statistical Journal. This is a mathematics magazine, and when they saw this, they said, this is an April Fool's Day joke. It can't be real. It's impossible.
You see, their previous prejudices were that the Bible was written by men, that it couldn't possibly contain this kind of information. So what they did was they said, we want you to run the computer program against the Talmud. Let's just see whether maybe anything written in Hebrew has these codes. No, no codes were found. Then they ran it against the book War and Peace, translated into Hebrew. No codes were found. Then they ran it against uh, books like the apocryphal books of 1st and 2nd, 3rd and 4th Maccabees, and the book of Tobit. No codes were found. Only in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Malachi. Now, they began to look and they said, let's take a look and see whether or not biblical things are there. So Jewish rabbinic students said, let's look at Genesis 38. Now, you know, that's the story of Judah and Tamar. Judah has a daughter, uh, a daughter-in-law, who's married two of his sons, who were wicked men. And as those two wicked sons died, she then, left without children, decided, I'm going to disguise myself as a prostitute to have a child. Out of this illicit union came twins. And ultimately, this is the ancestors of King David. So what happens? The Jewish students fed in the text of Deuteronomy, or rather of Genesis 38, the story on the surface text of Judah and Tamar. Then they asked the computer to find the names of the ancestors of King David, because out of this union ultimately came all of these people. To their shock, every 49 letters it spelled out, Faraz, the son born to Judah. Then it spelled out Ruth and Boaz. Then it spelled out the rest of the names, not only Ruth and Boaz, but Ovid, their son. It continued and it spelled out Boaz, Ovid, then Jesse, and finally even King David. And my friends, it was in the right chronological order. When they did a statistical analysis, they asked the computer, what's the chance that this is random? And they found it was one chance in 800,000. When they went to Genesis chapter 2, the story of the Garden of Eden, it tells us that God said you could eat of all the trees of the Garden of Eden except for one. Well, they wondered how many trees are in here. Now, on the surface text, no trees are named except the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yet, when they asked the computer to look for the 25 different trees that are named in the Hebrew Bible, all 25 of them were present in code in Genesis 2 by skipping every 21 letters. Astonishing. It is absolutely beyond the capacity of humans to do this. If you doubt me, try it sometime. Try and do it in English and write a passage on any topic at all that makes any sense at all, putting the names of 25 different trees in a passage as short as Genesis 2 and keep it to every 21 letters. I'll tell you, it's impossible. Not only that, they went to the book of Leviticus. Now, Leviticus is the law of God's high priest. And when they asked it, they saw that the word Aaron was not found in chapter 1. But in code, every 49 letters, it spelled out Aaron. Then they looked at other intervals and they found that 25 times in this one chapter of 735 letters, the word Aaron was spelled out. Wheels within wheels within wheels. Do you know even the war in the Gulf was spelled out in the Bible? In the book of Genesis, if we look in Genesis chapter 29, we find it's the story of Jacob. And yet, when they looked in with the codes and the computer codes, they asked it to look for Saddam Hussein, and they found his name, Saddam Hussein. Then they found the name America. America was found in the codes in Judah, uh, Genesis chapter 29, verse 2. Every hundred letters, it spelled out not only Saddam Hussein, but it spelled out America, and it continued in the ninth verse, in Iraq. Not only was Schwarzkopf, the general's name, spelled out, but they found that it spelled out the word Russian and Scud B, the name of the missile that actually was used by 39 of them from Iraq that landed in Israel. Even the word intelligent weapon was used. Here we see a picture of a destroyer shooting one of the cruise missiles that were so accurate of unerring accuracy. And here the Bible described intelligent weapon, smart weapon. But even the word Russian Scud B missile was found in the very same verse in the book of...